Well, joining me now is Commissioner for Agriculture, Phil Hogan. Good morning to you at the 8th Forum for the Future of Agriculture. Now, I know you've been talking about innovation, and one of the questions we asked online before the forum today was eradicating poverty and the role of European agriculture. What, what are you saying to the forum, and what do you hope to hear back? Well, first of all, we have to producers to be able to produce the food in order to deal with poverty and hunger, but we have to have nutrition at the centre of this particular food quantities, not just food, you know, any old quantity will do. And secondly, we want to have knowledge and innovation transfer for all of the people that want to aspire uh, to be able to grow their own food in a sustainable way, particularly in our developing countries, and Europe stands ready to assist in that process as well. One thing that comes through very strongly each year, and I wonder what your take on it uh, this year, is that we need to be knowledge intensive, not input intensive. Absolutely, and the uh, European Union now is developing programmes on research and uh, specific policies uh, in our Horizon 2020 programme to generate those, that particular knowledge and research. And the, the key, key message, though, is to ensure that that transfers to the farmer. Uh, it's not always successfully able to do that and uh, if we can do that in Europe we should be able to transfer that knowledge and innovation to other countries around the world that have a, a major uh, dependence on agriculture and food production where many of our developing countries of 60% of their population are directly and indirectly associated with agriculture. This is the eighth year of the forum and year on year we hear that we need to produce more, input less and that equation means the pressure on farmers grows every year. Is innovation really the solution? I know you, you talked about the innovation platform. Yeah, well, the common agricultural policy has changed a lot. In the last 20 years, we've gone from butter mountains and mid lakes uh, to a market orientated policy, started by my predecessor, uh, Ray McSharry. And uh, we have seen uh, a policy evolving now where we're not dependent on export subsidies, we're not dependent on the tools for intervention that we had on that occasion. So we're helping farmers to. Uh, embrace the environment, to look at how we can produce food in a competitive way uh, with taking account of our environmental constraints. If we don't respect the environment, we won't have a future for agriculture. And the end of milk quotas is an era, uh, the end of an era today. Some people would say, though, that the, the greening of the cap, those measures haven't gone far enough, that uh, economic development used to be associated with a certain amount of environmental degradation. That was just the way it was. The cap reform has gone some way to that. Critics would say not enough. What would you say? Well, there's always be a debate about the balance that you must strike about increasing food production in order to feed the populations of Europe and the world and at the same time respecting our environmental constraints. And policy instruments that we use, like greening, are always going to be difficult when they're being introduced for the first time. Uh, but we do need agri-environment measures. We do need better soil fertility to produce more uh, and have higher yields. We do need respect for our natural resources like water. So I'm always interested to know what the alternatives are. Uh, but we have to do so that's not overly burdensome uh, that's not creating an administrative nightmare for farmers and food industry. So that's why we're going to enga engage in 2015 on a simplification of the common agricultural policy to reduce the administrative burden uh, on producers, on member states, on paying agencies and still achieve our policy objectives. I know your message is one-off simplification, although it's not a new message. I know Franz Frischler, who is here today, of course, uh, and a predecessor, talked of simplification in, in, in the 1990s. Aaron Gandhi addressed the conference when he opened it this morning. He talked about planting a seed. He talked about very simple, uh, you know, there's no uh, poverty of ambition, but there certainly is still poverty. He talked about very simple, measurable kind of actions. How does this fit into the Brussels bubble and the policy framework and, and the complexities that you are facing, uh, dealing with, the challenge of it? Well, I totally agree with Mr. Gandhi that if we could have a simple means of which we can achieve our objectives, it would be much better than the ad administrative complexity that was developed over the last 25, 30 years. So I have actually put a focus on uh, member states now and on practitioners in the agriculture and food area to help me with their ideas about how we can uh, achieve more simplification of the CAP, how we can actually protect the policy at the same time and the sound financial management which is necessary because European taxpayers are paying us a considerable amount of money to make sure that we have good implementation of a CAP that gives vitality to rural areas and feeds the population of Europe and the world. So complexity are, and simplification uh, you know, are always quite difficult issues, but I hope that we can make some changes uh, to reduce the administrative burden on all of the players in the system.
Commissioner Hogan, thank you. Enjoy the Forum for the Future of Agriculture today. Thank you, Arjun. Thank you.